Welcome to your power call. Shout out to all the new members coming into the power call. Welcome to your power call. Shout out to all our returning members of the power call. Welcome back to your power call. As always, it's a blessing to see one another again. We have another great topic that we're going to be discussing today. Let me know if you can hear me. You can see me. Uh, let me make sure I can see on the other side as well. Can't see. Thank you, Sister Shalon. All right. So, without further ado, we're going to go ahead and uh, we're going to get started. Let me do this here. Very good. Thank you. Share here. I'm saying God told me, leave those people behind that you got to convince. I don't got to tell you, why we, why we got to convince people who've been reading the word? Why we got to convince people who've been in the church their whole life? Why we got to convince people who've seen the power of God over and over again? Why we got to keep convincing? It's time to move forward. We ain't got a lot of time on this earth to be having meetings. That at the end of the meeting, don't nothing come out of it. I don't even care if we met for four hours and something came from it. We meeting and ain't nothing coming from it but bad feelings. It's homeless people. It's people with mental disorders. It's kids trying to go to college. We still living from check to check. You've been paying time for how long? It's time to move forward. You've been paying tithes for how long? You had that gift for how long? It's time to move forward. God is ashamed of most of us in this room. Now, I can't speak for all y'all. He told me I'm ashamed of you. This man just did an app and it's got 80 million people following. What would happen if you did something for me and 80 million people gave their life to me, son? You still going to non-believers to push your message. Why you ain't got your own? Why you keep saying, oh God, if I say too much Jesus, they're going to shut me down. They shouldn't be able to shut you down. You should have your own stuff. You, putting your, you keep putting your stuff on their stuff and crying about what they doing to your stuff. Get your own stuff. We talk about people who got stuff who ain't even got God like we got God. And they got more stuff than we do. They got more faith. They moving further than we moving. I brought a treat my, uh, forward. Say it with me. One, two, three. Please do me a favor. Write in your phone before you leave. What do you need to go forward in? Why don't y'all, why does as, as anointed as you are, why don't your bank account look like it? As anointed as we are, why don't your credit score look like the God that you serve? What's the problem? Why aren't our relationships, why aren't we producing? We're not going forward. We just want to be here. No, we no more of that. No more the coasting, no more coasting, no more settling, no more going in circles. We're going forward or I, you ain't going with me. I, you be like, hey, listen to me, and I ain't mad at you, but you got your little settling party. <laughs> Settle, if you will, if you must. I'm not mad at you, it's safer. <laughs> you don't want this life. You don't want this life. This life, God get to tell you what, you want, what he wants you to do every day. You don't want this life. You don't want God to tell you when he wants you to wake up. Go ahead and keep your, you wake up at nine every day self and you ain't going to get up. No, I don't wake up before nine. Okay, I don't know what God you serve. I don't serve a God who on my schedule. Sometimes he want to use me at 3 a.m. Sometimes he want to use me at 3 p.m. Sometimes he want me to go to a restaurant and get terrible service so I can leave and then come back and get what I was supposed to get in the first place. And that ain't breakfast. That's what I just said though. The only reason I called home girl wasn't even breakfast, but it was being obedient to my wife. Bro, you still tripping on why your marriage ain't you giving 60%. How dare you want 120 when you're giving 60? There's a part in the Bible that says, whatever you do, do it with excellence. And some of us are not financially where we're supposed to be because you are working, but it's 80%. Listen to me, do me a huge favor. 
you're going to go where all the word says or don't go with it at all. Don't be a skeptic. It's not, it's not worth it. So I'm talking to this billionaire yesterday, and uh, he's like, E, I see what you're doing, but you need to take it to the next level. You know what I'm saying? Hey, everything he was saying was dope until he started saying, but if I'm going to help you, I'm going to need to see your financial records. I was like, oh. <laughs> he was like, yeah, how much did you make? I told him. He was like, okay, good. Uh, send, me the, send me the bank statements. I was like, whoa, bank statements? Like, bro, this is our first conversation. Like, our real first conversation. Like, you ain't even here. You on Zoom. <laughs> like, my man started asking some serious stuff. And God says, hold up, hold up, hold up. Hold up, what you doing? Why are you skeptical? You call him. He ain't call you. He didn't call you. You call him. He didn't ask for your help. You asked for his. So if you're really trying to go to the next level, if you bump that life, get a man what he asked for. Or stop wasting his time. But there is no growth in fear. There is no growth in scared. There is no growth. Why are you asking? Why are you calculating something you can't calculate? Why are you sitting here, people of God, trying to calculate with the Messiah? Why are you trying to collect? He is the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. If He tell you do something, do it. And don't you ain't got to calculate it. You couldn't if you wanted to. So, welcome back to your power call. Let me uh, switch this back off here. Turn this back up. We're going to get this right. Again, assalamu alaikum. Welcome to your power call. Uh, let me fix my camera here on the premium side. I think that's a little, a little choppy. You want to make sure it's good and clear. Make sure everybody can see well and hear well. But yes. Uh, let's get this right. As always, we are going to open up in prayer. So let's get that going as well. All right. All right, take the position of prayer that's most comfortable to you. In the name of Allah, the beneficent and merciful. Surely I have turned myself, being upright to him who originated the heavens and the earth. I am not of the polytheists. Surely my prayer, my sacrifice, my life, and my death are all for Allah, the Lord of the world. No associate has he, and this I am commanded, and I am of those who submit. O Allah, thou art the king. There is no God but thee. Thou art the Lord, and I am thy servant. I have been unjust to myself, and I confess my faults. So grant me protection against all my faults. But none grants protection against false but thee. And guide me to the best of morals. For none guides to the best of morals but thee. And turn me away from the evil and indecent morals. For none turns away from the evil and indecent morals but thee. O Allah, make Muhammad successful. And the true followers of Muhammad successful. As thou did make Abraham successful. And the true followers of Abraham successful. For surely thou art praiseworthy and magnified. Allah bless Muhammad. And the true followers of Muhammad. As thou did bless Abraham and the true followers of Abraham, surely thou art praiseworthy and magnified. I mean. All right, all right. Welcome to your power call. As always, if you would like to upgrade, go to www.thepowercall.net. If you're getting this link and you've received this link from someone else and you would like to join the app, go to thepowercall.net. And join the app upgrade if you would like to give your takeaways, your feedback at the end of our uh, session today. This will be a two part session. Um, this is a little over two hour lecture that we're doing today. Uh, so be sure if you have takeaways, take notes. Be sure to share your. Get it back going here on the other side. I think that got disrupted. If, it, uh, if Sister Randisha or Sister Alexia, if you're here, can you check the Vimeo side for me to make sure that the live is still going on that side as well? I believe I had to restart it, so I apologize for that. Okay. There we 
just let me know if we're good to go on that side. Okay, Sister so Sabrina, can you you still can't hear? If if so, you may have to come out and come back in. If it is anything that has disrupted that, I apologize for that inconvenience. Make sure my audio is straight as well on this side. There we go. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So let's. Without further ado, we're gonna go ahead and get into our lecture here. Let me see. Is are we good on Vimeo? There we go. Okay, yep. So we're good. We're good over there. All right. So let me just go ahead and bring the lecture on. I appreciate y'all's patience. Delay any further. We thank Allah that our brother is with us tonight. Let us bring him on with a warm welcome, Brother Minister Louis Farrakhan. In the name of Allah, the Beneficent, the Merciful. I bear witness that there is no God but Allah, and I bear witness that Muhammad is his servant. I greet you, my dear brothers and sisters, with the greeting words of peace. Assalamu alaikum. I, I wanted to, before we begin, say that the new uh, Final Call newspaper is out, and it has a picture of Mr. Reagan and a picture of uh, Brother Farrakhan and the headline says Farrakhan is right right with respect to Reagan and the things that <clears throat> I was shown in a vision about this man and his lust to kill uh, Muammar Gaddafi and the war that he and his Joint Chiefs of Staff was planning against Libya. And this was revealed to me in September of 1985, the 17th of September. But I did not know that they had consummated the plan to uh, bomb uh, Libya, to invade Libya around Labor Day, uh, which is uh, early September 1985. So everything that I warned uh, Mr. Reagan of uh, over the last um, near seven years uh, is now coming to pass. And the striking thing about the warning is that warning is never meant to hurt you. Warning is meant to keep you from hurting yourself. All of our parents and friends, teachers, at one time or another have warned us not to do this or not to do that. And if we did this, the consequence would be, and we were heedless to these warnings and ultimately fell into exactly what someone told us we would come into. It doesn't mean that a person is a prophet or a seer to be a warner. God can give you something to give to me. You may lay down and just have a dream. And in that dream, God will say to you, you should say such and such to Brother Farrakhan. <clears throat> this does not mean you have all of a sudden become an angel or all of a sudden become a prophet. But it does mean that God has his own way of communicating to us through us. And if we are open for his communication, he will communicate to us for ourselves as well as for others. 
Unfortunately, the things that I said to Mr. Reagan, he did not pay attention to it. And I was blessed to see when he was very, very popular that he would go out in disgrace. And so I think that this is a very uh, interesting paper this time. And uh, the article of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad is titled, it's from the book of Isaiah, Your Agreement with Hell will not stand. And the article of Brother Farrakhan uh, is titled, Warning is Mercy. Warning is Mercy. And anytime you get a warning about anything you are doing or about to do, this is God's own way of showering you and me with mercy. And if we fail to heed the warning, then the punishment or the consequence of rejection we must bear. Okay? Now, the whole scope of Elijah Muhammad's teachings is warning and mercy to us as a uh, a people whom white America has nearly completely destroyed and it is a warning to the government of the United States of the consequences of the evil that will come upon America for her unwarranted evils done to an innocent people whose fathers were brought into a condition of slavery by their fathers. We had nothing to do with it. We just ended up in a condition. So God today has to champion the cause of the oppressed. This is in his nature that he stands with those who are deprived of justice, who are deprived of equity, who are deprived of freedom. For these three essentials to life are not something for white people or other people to give to you and me, but these are God-given guarantees. And anyone that imposes his will or her will to deprive us of God's will, then God must defend his will. And ultimately, you have never seen any oppressor, any tyrant, any slave master have perpetuity or long-lasting power in evil. There are forces always at work in the cause of freedom, justice, and equality. I'm sure that's clear to all of you. Now, that's not my uh, subject tonight. Tonight I want to continue my discourse with you from this past uh, Sunday. Now, when uh, Reverend Jim Baker fell from grace, so to speak, with the PTL or the Praise the Lord movement that uh, he fathered, really, on television, many Christian ministers took to the airwaves saying that Satan, Satan overpowered their brother. In one sense, that is true. That is really, really, really true. But in another sense, it's very immature spiritually for us to believe that there is this spook up kind of Satan who is around looking for every child of God to bring you down and whenever you make a misstep Satan got you you don't have anything to do with it yourself but some 
spooky, ethereal being slipped up on you when you were not aware and just got you to do sin. So it's really not your fault, it's that wicked old demon, Satan. Now, this is theology that is true, but it is geared for the spiritually childlike, who are not ready to come to grips with their own responsibility for evil, their own responsibility for good, all right? Now, if we look at nature, if we look at life, if we look at the very atom, which is the small particle of matter, and we understand that the scholars and scientists say, Pardon me, that matter is neither created or destroyed, so matter is infinite. So if we look at matter, which is anything that uh, has weight and takes up space, though there are particles of matter that you and I cannot see with the naked eye, but they can be weighed, and they do take up space, but we may not have the wisdom of how to weigh such small particles of matter. But in the smallest particle of matter, which at one time it was the atom, but now the scholars and scientists have seen something smaller than the atom, smaller than the neutron, smaller than the proton, they call it a little thing called a quark, Q-U-A-R-K. It is a small bit of matter, but in that matter, you will always find the polarity or the positive and the negative. It exists in the tiniest particle of matter, all the way out to the extremity of the universe itself. You will see positive and negative, or you will see these opposites and each opposite has a, 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 is a force and it is the working of these forces that create what we call life itself so you have life and you have death you have light and you have darkness you have positive and you have negative you have hot and you have cold you have joy and you have sadness is that right you have pain and you have pleasure you have freedom you have slavery you have truth you have falsehood you have light you have darkness you have god you have devil or satan now if god is a good god and there is no person who believes in god that believes that God is other than good. We know that God is good. Well, then if God is good and all things are created by God, then did God make devil? And if God made devil, how could a good God make devil? And if he made devil to give us hell, then how is God good? And if God made devil what did he make him from since he is the author of all things and evidently this serpent was right there in the garden according to the bible when you read the story of adam you read where god created the heavens and the earth right and he said it was good he created all of this he created man said this is good then he didn't want man alone he went into man took one of his ribs he made eve said this is good it never said that god created the snake but all of a sudden here come a serpent in the garden slipping up to eve to get eve to disobey god 
So all of a sudden, the serpent now is in the garden. And from that time of Adam's fall, when you read the Bible from Genesis all the way to Revelation, you read of man having a problem with this thing called Satan or devil. And he's not able to conquer Satan. He's not able to conquer devil. And just when he thinks he's got the upper hand, Satan comes up and knocks him down. Satan gets into his prophets. Satan gets into his messengers. Satan gets into the people of God's choice. And after God chooses them and makes a covenant with them and delivers them, they turn around and set up other gods beside God. Satan seems to have a way with God's people. I think it's about time that we get a grip on this Satan dude. <laughs> and it's about time that we become mature, thinking people of religion, that our pastors don't need to preach these fire and brimstone sermons about you're going to burn in hell, you know. Yes, sir. You, if you don't listen to what I say, you're going to hell and you're going to burn and it's an eternal fire. I mean, you ought to think about that. An eternal fire and you don't burn up. Ain't no fire <laughs> that you have ever seen last too long that it don't fix up matter and get rid of it. But you're going to be in, it, in an eternal fire. I don't understand that, but I do understand it. But I want to help you by the grace of Allah through the guidance of the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad to get a better grip on this thing called religion so that you will be responsible of the way you were taught but know now that you are too mature to be taught like a child and continue to respect religion. I wish the pastors of religion would be listening. Now, dear beloved, again, as I mentioned Sunday and I will mention it again tonight, most preachers who lift up the standard of righteousness and decency preach righteousness in a way to make everybody that does something contrary to what God wants guilty. So if you go to church and it's a holiness church or Pentecostal church or church of God in Christ, these are the kinds of churches
no, it's not frozen. I paused it so we can allow the people that's in the premium side who aren't able to hear to come over to the Vimeo side so that they can hear better, um, so that they get the full message. Um, again, I'm gonna work on getting the audio and the video cleared up on the premium side. So inshallah, tomorrow it'll be concise. It'll be consistent on both sides as it was on the previous lectures that we had earlier this week. Um, but again, I'm just giving it a moment for people to come over to the Vimeo side. Again, check your messages. Click on the Vimeo link so that you can hear the audio clear. You can see the video clear as well, so you can see the minister clear. Um, but just give it, even just a minute or two for everyone to come over. And as you come over, just state that you're here if you're coming from the premium side. Um, just so I know that everyone is migrated over that's want, that wants to hear the audio that much more clearer. And then, of course, once we wrap up this half of the lecture, come back over to the premium side if you would like to share. Um, or at least we'll get through the lecture and then you can hold your takeaways to either put them in the te power call testimonials or you can wait until we finish the lecture completely at the end tomorrow um, and give your takeaways as well. So we're just having a bit of a technical difficulty on the premium side. So I just want to make sure everyone is getting the same message in the same manner. Again, just check your messages. Um, I sent a, a mass message out um, at the beginning that has the Vimeo link um, included. You can choose that option or you can go um, come out of the premium side, click on home, go to events, the events tab. Then you will see part one for today. Then click on the Vimeo link or the join now option and you'll be able to come over to the Vimeo side. Yeah, I have it paused right now, Sister Alexia. Let me get it back started in just one moment. Just trying to give everybody a chance because some people coming in later so they may not be hearing why everything is paused. But again, the audio on the premium side is a little uh, low and the video is choppy. So I need to work on getting that corrected for tomorrow's like uh, part of the lecture. So for now, to hear the audio better, come over to the Vimeo side. The Vimeo side is actually having is where I'm sharing it from. So it's the audio for some reason is, is a little bit choppy today. So just come over to the Vimeo side um, and then I'll resume it. I'm just trying to give everybody a chance to come from the premium side and come over to the Vimeo side and then I'll resume the video from there. And it might be best if I, yeah, well, I'm going to just leave it like it is. So I'm going to go ahead and resume the video. If you have not transitioned over, please do so. If you would like to hear the audio that much clearer on the Vimeo side, again, check your messages, click the Vimeo link um, and join that way or go to the home space, click events tab, and then go to the part one of this lecture and choose the join now or Vimeo link option that you will see on the event. And if you can, just let me know if you're migrating over in the comment section of the Vimeo side, just place here if you're coming from the premium side, just so I know that everyone is kind of migrating over and we can resume in one minute. So we can go ahead and get started. I'm going to mute my mic on this side and then we'll go ahead and get going. That really want the people to be on this thing called religion. 
so that you will be respectful of the way you were taught but know now that you are too mature to be taught like a child and continue to respect religion. I wish the pastors of religion would be listening. Now, dear beloved, again, as I mentioned Sunday, and I will mention it again tonight, most preachers who lift up the standard of righteousness and decency preach righteousness in a way to make everybody that does something contrary to what God wants guilty. So if you go to church and it's a holiness church or Pentecostal church or church of God in Christ, these are the kinds of churches that really want the people to be right. And they strive for that. Jehovah's Witness likewise. And of course, the Muslims. There are many denominations of Christianity that really want to see the people right. But it is in those kinds of denominations where you find the most oppression. Because the people say they want to be right and they get weak and they make a misstep. All of a sudden, they are made immobile because of guilt. I mean, how many times have we done something that we know is wrong and we just know it is totally wrong? Then in the night, when everybody else in the house is asleep, we can't sleep because the deed that we have done is bothering us. And you never stop to wonder, what is this that troubles me at night? See? What is this that troubles me at night where I cannot sleep because I have done something that I know is wrong? Now, nobody in my house knows that I did it, but I can't sleep. So somebody in my house knows what I did and got me up. All right. Now, if we look, beloved, at the nature of the teachings of the uh, Christian ministers, it is to make you afraid of hell so that you will not do the thing that will get you hell by frightening you so bad with this devil and frightening you so bad about you burning up that you get so scared you want to do wrong but you won't do it because you're scared. It doesn't mean that you still are right but you're just afraid to do wrong so physically you may look like you still belong to the holiness church. Are you still on the path of right? But up here in the mind where sin is conceived and the act of sin is consummated on a spiritual level, you already committed the act over and over and over and over and over and over again. And every time the act is committed in the mind, you are actually like a record making a groove. And it is only a matter of time before the physical act is consummated because in reality, you've already done it. You know, the mind is a powerful thing. When I was young, sometimes, you know, children have accidents, they say. They thought they were in the bathroom. Actually thought they went to the bathroom and end up wet in the bed. Is that right? But that's the mind. See? I'm not going any further along that line. <laughs> but the mind is powerful. Do you follow what I am saying? So, whenever we do something that is contrary to what is right, and the preachers 
hold up the standard of God. And God is very clear in the Bible and in the Quran of the things that he disapproves of. I mean, there's no gray area. It's absolute. He don't like this. He doesn't like that. He likes this, but he don't like that. So when the preacher raises up the standard of what God likes, immediately when you hear it raised up, if you've been doing something contrary, what happens? You drop your head, you feel a little shame. Look, oh God, I hope you get off that side. Oh. Why you want him to get up? Because I'm guilty. So most of these evangelical preachers that you read on television or hear on television or see on television, hear on the radio, or maybe your own pastor, they preach in a way to have a congregation full of guilty people. So can you imagine Jimmy Swaggart saying, God don't want nobody drunk. Well, that's right. But I just come out the whiskey store. Not me personally. <laughs> But if you just got a bottle, how you feel? All right, Jimmy, get off of that. I just paid so much and so much for this fifth. Then they start talking about dope. And you got some pot in the house, some crack, or whatever you use. But the way they preach it, they preach it in a way where you're guilty, but you ain't ready to give it up. You understand? I'm guilty. And I'd be damned if I'm going to let this man drive me away from what I like. And God, God don't like fornication and adultery. <laughs> and I mean, the people's face immediately drops because everybody <laughs> is guilty. <laughs> Satan and got a hold to you. Satan got you. Satan is doing this. And they say, oh, Lord, Satan must got me. Oh, now you really messed up. And guilt got you so tied down till you can't think straight. You can't move because guilt is a burden. God does not want us to preach his religion as though we are free. I'm talking about the preachers free from any sin or any guilt. And he doesn't want you to take a people that he came to save. And you destroy them with a heavy burden of guilt. But at the same time, you must lift up the standard of what he requires and then give them the strength to build their will to overcome their weakness that they may live up to the standard of God and thereby gain access to God's favor. There's a difference there. Preaching to make people feel guilty is not the spirit of a God of mercy. Preaching to make people feel, wow, I've fallen short, but Here's the way I can make it up and get on up to God. And that's the way it should be done. Okay? Now, look at this. In our body, this body that Almighty God has so bounteously and wonderfully fashioned for us, it is a goodly form, our form. It is a marvelous instrument, this body. Would you agree? In it, there's a heaven and there's a hell. Or there's an upper region, a heavenly part of us, which deals with that which does the controlling, the guiding. And there's the earthly part, which of course is the flesh, the blood, the bone. Okay? Now there's an unseen part of us, and there's a very visible part of us. The unseen or spiritual part deals with the way you think. You can't see that. 
But if you watch the actions of a person, it can tell you something about the way they think. But the real core of a man's thinking or a woman's thinking is called the heart. And the heart is compared in the scriptures of the Bible to the male organ. Oh, God. Now, this is not no filthy, cheap talk here tonight. Why is the heart compared to the male organ? Jesus talks about circumcision of the heart. Is that right? You can't circumcise the heart. Circumcision is an act decreed upon the Jews and Muslims of the male organ. It is the cutting away of the foreskin of the male organ. Now, what is it about the foreskin of the male organ that compares it with the heart or the core? of a man or woman's thinking, the seat of our intellect, and the core of our emotions. The foreskin is that which comes over, covers over the male organ and hides disease. So wise Allah, God, ordered that the children of Israel, the male children, be circumcised because the male organ can hold disease because it is in a dark place and it is covered. And this is where all germs or bacteria grow. They grow in darkness. And this is why under the arms and in all of the real dark places where there is more moisture and more darkness, there is the growth of more bacteria. Do you understand? So now, if this instrument is the instrument of life itself, and it is dirty with bacteria building up under that foreskin that is unseen and that is placed where it is created to be placed for the procreation of life and it is passing on life but it's also passing on death in the germs and disease that is around it that is unseen so Moses asked the little Jewish boys that when they are coming from their mother a few days old, cut away the foreskin, that the organ of life may be constantly washed and kept clean. But what about your heart? And what about your thinking? And what about the seat of your intellect? Mama don't know what you're thinking. Daddy don't know what you're thinking. You can hide your thoughts from anybody but yourself and God. So you can always appear to be one thing on the outside that you ain't got nothing to do with on the inside. Look at this now. So cutting away the foreskin of the heart, or Jesus called it circumcision of the heart, means cutting away that which hides the filth of an individual's thought process. You hear me? Yes, because from your heart flows the issues of life. From the male organ flows the germ of life. So if the vessel or vehicle through which life issues forth is corrupted, then whatever comes forth is corrupted. So no human being can Speak the word of God as pure as...
as the Word of God is because the Word of God is coming through the heart of an individual that may not be clean. Listen to me good now. I'm going to say that again. Look, that's why a lot of people that want to preach the Word of God, I mean, this is a serious thing here. This is no plaything because whatever is in you, it begins to corrupt the Word. A brother was about to go and preach one day and I asked him, what is your reason? Why do you want to preach? What is your motive? Why do you want to preach? If you preach for applause, you'll get it. But if you preach for applause, meaning vanity is issuing forth from the heart, then the vanity of the heart actually poisons the word because it's, it's a corruption of the spirit in which God revealed that word. Do you hear what I'm saying? I want you to listen now. Oh, y'all all right? Yes, sir. If I'm preaching because I want you to recognize me as somebody big or great, that's vanity, that's self-conceit, that poisons the word because God don't reveal the word for people to seek honor. God doesn't reveal the word for self-aggrandizement. God reveals his word for a very specific purpose. And in this case, it is to raise up a people that the white world has destroyed. And any vain thought that enters our mind is a corruption to the Spirit of God. So the heart has to be made clean, meaning the foreskin of the heart must be cut away so that the stench, the things that you think that stink, have to be able to be washed. And how do you wash the heart? You can wash the male organ with soap and water, but how do you wash the core of your thinking and the seat of your own intellect to make sure that your knowledge is not corrupted? How do you wash that? See, water is to the body and soap is to the body what sincere prayer is to the seat of our intellect. People that don't pray, don't recognize God, don't recognize our need and our dependence on Him, then this thing begins to start getting corroded. And I want to show you, beloved, by the help of God, where this Satan fella is tonight. Mm -hmm. Some Muslims who follow the Honorable Elijah Muhammad got very angry with me. When I began to teach this, they thought I was going away from the teaching of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. Because I don't want you to keep looking at the white man and seeing him as the only devil. That would be unjust, unjust to yourself as well as to them. The eye cannot see inward. Your eye sees me. My eye sees you. So now when you see me, you don't see you. And when I see you, I don't see me because the eye is made to look out. What God wants is for you to look in because the easiest thing you can do is blame somebody else. Have you ever seen people who fail? See, if it wasn't for her, I'd have been a great preacher, but she out preaches me, so I hate her. Have you ever seen people blame others when they don't achieve what they think they should achieve? Well, if it wasn't for my mother, or it wasn't for my father, that no good bum, see, he never brought any money home. That's what it was. Hey, you a big grown hulk. 25, 30 years old, you blaming your mother and your father for your shortcoming? 
Don't you realize that you are now the master of your destiny? And if you as a grown person want to continue to blame the white man, blame your father, blame your mother, blame the educator. I had a bad teacher. I went to that dumb school over there. I, I was in reform school. I went to jail. I went to here. Every place you've been is school. And if you learn what you're supposed to learn, you come out of wherever you've been with a determination to become your own master. Do you hear me? Look now. We can run around blaming society. Well, society got me all messed up. That's why I'm using drugs. Is this white man? Damnable world that that cracker built, that no good pack of wood hunky. And you steam yourself all up. And what have you done? The white man is still ruling, and you right. still talking about him. And you can't see that if you don't get a grip on you the white man will be in power tomorrow the day after and the day after now look at the mayor <coughs> the good mayor <coughs> when the mayor won in 1983 it shocked everybody we were happy well we happy we got a black mayor and the moment the mayor in his acceptance speech at Navy Pier, told us what he was intending on doing. The next day, Vodoliak and the boys had gotten together, and I mean it was a battle royal from that point on. Is that right? Now look how God works. That man had difficulty. It was the 29 against the 21. And the fight was on. Is that right? Yeah. Then the mayor had to maneuver. He went to court, got certain uh, 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 maps overturned, created new wars, new black aldermen to the cause, Hispanic aldermen. He's fighting to get control because you can't govern nothing that you don't control. Now, Vidoliak jumped out. I get him. I, I, I want to be mayor. Now, Vidoliak is out. The mayor got control. Burke is going. Now, the mayor will show us what's really in himself. That may be good. I believe it is, but it don't have to be. See, the forces that God sets up as opposition, they are forces that help to keep you in check. When you overcome those forces and now feel free, then the freedom manifests everything that's hidden in you, the thing that is good, and also the thing that is not so good. Now, let's deal with this devil. Y'all yes, <laughs> all right? Yes, <laughs> now, you got the head. And you got the body. The head, of course, is that which creates satisfaction for the body. The body has urges that send messages to the head. The head thinks and satisfies urges, needs, wants. Now since all of us are the same, Basically, what it's saying. What you want, I want. What you need, I need. You need air, water, earth, food, clothing, shelter, education, love, peace, happiness, right? Yes. Comfort. Yes, sir. And the union of male and female, yes. the procreation of the human species. And at some point, 
along this road, death comes. Can't help it, right? Yeah. Now, even though we don't like death, we just don't like that fella. Right. <laughs> He's a mean old dude, eh? But you can't have this without this. Do you know when you breathe in the air, these are living atoms. When you breathe it in, you change their form. They die that you live. You eat the vegetation of the earth, it's alive. When you put it in, you change its form to an energy to keep your life going. So if that didn't die, you couldn't live. The chicken wanted to live too. Teach me, teach. <laughs> The fish wanted to live too. Yes. But you ate the chicken tonight. <laughs> you ate the fish tonight. Hope you had something good to eat. Or you ate the hog tonight. Oh. <laughs> and that died in order for you to live, some of you more miserably. <laughs> but you still alive. The point is. Death feeds life, and life feeds death. These are opposites, and these opposites are working actually together for the benefit of service to the will of God. Now, if we, as I said in my uh, lecture in Phoenix, Arizona, which became the base of this new uh, course of study, I said that there is but one life there's not a life for white people and a life for black people and a life for Chinese people and a life for Hispanic people. God only gives one life. Listen good now. That life has its root in water. Now, if your life have a root in water, my life has a root in water. The plants have a root in water. The insects have a root in water. Is that right? Yeah. All living things have a root in water. Okay. Then if water is common to all living things, and it is, there is only one life. Right. And God gives that to everyone. On the human level, God only gives one life. Now, look at this. Water has three forms. As matter can be liquid, solid, or gas. Is that right? Yes, sir. Water is liquid. But if you boil it to the 212 degrees, you get a gas. And that gas is called what? And the nature of steam is? It rises. The difference between steam and water, water seeks its level, steam goes up. Is that right? Yeah. But when you freeze water below 32 degrees, it changes its form, and it becomes what? Ice. Ice. But there ain't but one life. If you thaw the ice out, you get water. If you heat the water up, you get steam. If you cool the steam, you get water. If you cool it further, you get ice. And you can keep this thing going forever. So what is ice today could be water tomorrow, could be steam the day after. And what is steam today could be ice tomorrow, depending. Yes. Yeah. Now, there's a lot in this. <laughs> now, look, if, if there isn't but one life, where the hell does this devil and stuff come from? <laughs> now, see this head here? <laughs> God gives you this so that you can develop it. You develop the faculties that he gives you, then every 
force or urge or need of the body is regulated, is controlled by the intelligence of the head. You know the bum down here in one of these missions? He got the same kind of head that you got. But what's the difference between his head and your head? Only difference is the intelligence and the use of it to satisfy me. This man that got a good head on his body, that head serves the body by controlling and mastering the life forces. Now, Sunday with Jim Baker, what we were talking about was the force called sex. That's a powerful force, isn't it? Yes, Have you ever been hungry? Yes, you ever been hungry? Yes, when you get hungry, what do you do? <laughs> you try to eat. If there ain't no food, you go somewhere and get some. And if, if there ain't no food, you steal it. You get hungry enough, you'll hurt somebody. Tell the truth. Just let some beans be cooking. And somebody tell you you can't eat and you hungry and they ain't no look like you're going to die, you break the door down. Get you a gun and you don't want nothing but the pot of beans. People, when they get hungry, they eat rats. Rather than dying. Now, now listen, don't, don't, don't talk to me now if you don't, you don't want to reason with me. This is not foolishness. This urge to feed the appetite of hunger is so strong that when people have been in uh, airplane crashes and they have been without food and their friend died in the crash, they have cut up their friend and eaten their friend to satisfy what? Hunger. Hunger. That's how bad that force is. Yes, sir. So you don't even know what you are as long as there's some food around. You didn't hear, Brother Firecon. As long as mama got the meal on the table, you don't know what you are. But when you lose the ability to eat, to get food, and you get hungry. The people, the Palestinians in the refugee camps, when they wrung those camps with soldiers and wouldn't let no food go in, they began eating rats and cats and whatever they could find. Because hunger will make you do that. And the Bible says that that day would become so bad you would look As you say you love your child, get hungry enough, and you may eat your own young like some lower animals do because you don't know how powerful the urge to eat is until you are without food. And this is why, beloved, in the Muslim world and among righteous people, And the reason that they teach fasting is because feeding the stomach is a powerful urge that must be under your and my control. Yes, mm. yes. Now you got food now, right? Yes, and anytime you want, you go to the refrigerator, open it up, and eat. And <laughs> and you wish, you say, I, I wish I could lose this weight. I just wish. But what is it that you wish? You wish you could control the urge. But that urge has overpowered you. See? So fasting allows us to discipline the urge. And no one can be righteous 
unless we can control the inner forces that are all good. They are all good. Or you don't want to call them good. You say they are all forces. They are neither good nor bad. But if the intelligence does not bring these forces under control, then evil becomes your way of life. Look, I'm hungry. My nature says self-preservation is the first law. I don't have any food. I come to you, I say, Miss, I haven't eaten in a week. Could you spare something? You say, nigga? <laughs> get away from my door. You damn bum, why didn't you get something to eat? Now, right there, the urge could be so strong, it overpowers my intelligence. Then I kill you <laughs> for a piece of bread. Listen. Now, the person is not evil. The person is hungry. But the urge overcame reason. And now you have an animal on your hand because human beings are potentially animals and they are potentially God. Yes, You've got the potential to be as low down as you want to be yes. or you can go as high as oh, God himself. Yes, he is the ideal. Yes. Do you understand what I'm saying? I know. God, the time is rolling. Everybody all right? Yes. Stick with me now. All right. Now, you know, there's a need to be loved. Yes, sir. Don't you want to be loved? Yes, sir. Don't you want to be loved? Yes, sir. I want to be loved. That's a need. Now, what will you do? <laughs> How far will you go to be loved? Well, I, I, I don't know. <laughs> I ain't gonna do nothing to be loved, but that's a lie. Yeah. It is a lie. It is true. Sometimes your need to be loved bends you all out of shape. Yes. yes. Because you don't recognize that you already are loved Ooh. by the one who brought you yes, into sir. existence. But because you don't recognize the divine love, you need parental love. All of us as children need to be loved by our parents. We need to feel that our parents love us. I didn't know that my mother loved me until I was a grown man. Now, you may laugh, but I don't think it's funny. Because I suffered my whole young life thinking that my mother didn't love me because I didn't understand the way she demonstrated her love. Most black people have never received love. They don't know how to show love. So the only thing they can do to show you their love is not this cuddly, hugging and squeezing and tender thing, but they show you love by feeding you three meals a day and going out and working and sacrificing to see that you have this and have that. They may not always be there when you think you want them and need them, but it don't mean that they don't love you. Circumstances don't allow them to be where you want them to be. So I can see now, as a grown man looking back on my wonderful mother, I never laid down in a dirty bed. Yes. I never put on a dirty pair of underwear, and I never had to wear an underwear more than one time. I never had unclean socks. I never went to bed hungry. I never lived in a dirty home. My home was clean all the time. We were poor, but we were dignified. I never had to wear tattered clothes. Mom knew how to sew, and she would scrimp and save, and Easter time, she would dress me in a new suit. Yes, sir. Keep me looking good. That's the way she said, baby, I love you. Right. But I didn't hear the words, I love you. So I didn't really know that she really, 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 really loved me. So I went through all this mental anguish and torture to be loved. Do you understand? 
You go out and you become the clown to be the, the, the life of the party because you want love, you want attention, you want somebody to recognize, hey, I'm here. Yes, sir. Right. This is us, a people who need to be loved and have not been loved. So the urge to be the need to be loved, the want to be loved has bent us all out of shape. So we make our hair green, Come on. purple, short troops. Yes. We wear loud colors, crazy yes. turn up shoes. All white folks got to do is make some so wicked cute. style. It may come out tomorrow with something with a tail on it. <laughs> so and some black person would jump yes. in, in yes. the tail suit, <laughs> put on high heel shoes and an overstring bag. <laughs> Jerry curl and a plastic bag. Yes. And dip on down street. What's wrong with you, nigga? I just got a need. I want somebody to notice me. I'm in the world. I'm alive. That's why your children raise hell. They mess up in school. They want attention. They want somebody to pay them some attention. I'm here, damn it. Y'all got me. And you get all bent out of shape. So you think your mama don't love you, and all of a sudden here comes a brother along and he pays you some attention. Oh, I'm in love. I'm in love. <clears throat> Poor brother. Ain't nobody give him no attention. Some little girl smile at him. And he's all messed up in the head. <laughs> I'm in love. <laughs> I never felt a feeling like this before. God has never felt nothing like this in my life. This changed my whole personality. I'm in love. There's a need to know. You're a human being, man. You're not an animal. You need to know. And you have an inquiring mind. And all people have to do to mess you up is when you're curious, put the wrong thing in your head. Because we have a need to know. And this is what white folks have done. We need to know. And then the white man controlled our education, then told us what he wanted us to know. Yeah. And this is what white folks have done. We need to know. And then the white man controlled our education, then told us what he wanted us to know. Yeah. And you read it, you look at yourself and see why we're all bent up out of shape. Some of us today that are my color or lighter, we're sick. Well, I, I know I'm good looking. <laughs> what makes you good looking? Well, I'm light. Look like 10 miles of bad road, but he's good looking. Because he's light. Here's a black person. Skin looked like chocolate pudding. Not a wrinkle nowhere. Handsome as he could be, but he's ugly. Come on. Because he's black. Sick. Who made you sick? It's the society that fed you. It came in on a need. I need to be loved. I need to know who I am and what I am and to feel my worth as a human being. But then somebody come in and tell me I'm black because I'm cursed. So then the lighter I am and the more close I am to white folk and the less black I am, the less cursed I am. So because I'm yes. less cursed, I walk tougher than the one who look more cursed. And the blacker you are, you think you're the most cursed of all. And that's so sad because the blackest men and the blackest women of ours are all frozen on the inside. Never speak is against them and they're not wrong, but it's something we 
can overcome. We're just yes. dealing with God and the devil. So this is a real force now. And all we're doing is manipulating forces within you. And we can make you good or make you evil just by the manipulation of these natural forces. Now let's come to this thing called sex. Now people don't discover their stomachs. You know, they're born into the world hungry, so they got to eat. <clears throat> Some children know they got to eat, don't even know where the food goes, but they know I got to eat. Then one day they learn in physiology the food, you know, goes in here and it goes down into a stomach. Oh, beautiful, I got a stomach. But you were hungry from day one. Now, as you mature, another hunger comes up in us because God has so fixed this thing, it's a timing mechanism. When you get, it used to be, sisters, when you're 12 or 13, and brothers, when you're in what they call puberty, you notice a little hair come under your arms and in other places, and you run and say, ooh, mommy! <laughs> A hair down there. <laughs> now that hair, if you look at the scriptures of Samson, the hair was a sign of his strength. <laughs> hair growing in certain areas where hair was not only means that the powers of these organs that were once dormant is now manifesting life. See? When you see, go out there, and you see it's springtime, you see the grass come up, it was all, the seed was already there, just waited for the right season, then it started coming up. Is that right? Same thing with you and me as human beings, the urge, the hunger for sex, is already there, but it's not the season. But when you start developing, then you notice feeling come into you and an attraction for the opposite sex. You don't understand it. At one point, you didn't care about boys. And at one point, brothers, we didn't care about no girls. <laughs> but at another point, we got the point. <laughs> and we was pointed toward her, and she was pointed toward us. Now that's the area when this power and urge and hunger for expression comes alive. Now, no child knows how to control that urge. They hardly know what it is. They're experimenting with it. They know that this is wrong. Now, don't get me wrong. They know this is wrong. But knowing something is wrong and doing what is right, now that's an entirely different animal. A lot of folk know what's wrong, right and what's wrong, but the idea is, I know it's wrong, but if loving you is wrong, I don't oh, want to be right. <laughs> See, now look at this. Wait, wait, does it? How did I get into this kind of stuff? <laughs> now, dear brothers and sisters, y'all all right? What I'm saying to you is, it takes strength to do what you know is right. See, it don't take strength to do wrong. All you gotta do to do wrong is follow the urge. The urge is neither right nor wrong. The urge is an urge. 
Now, when right and wrong comes in is when you measure the standard up against the urge. Now, I'm hungry. There's a standard. Thou shalt not kill. Right. That don't mean thou shalt not kill, period, because you'd kill something to stay living. Yes, it means thou shalt not kill outside of the law of justice. Now I'm hungry. Hmm. I know I ain't supposed to kill. The urge say, eat. <laughs> and if I keep hungry long enough, the urge is going to overpower the moral law, and I will kill. Then the urge unsatisfied led me to do something against the law of God. Do you see that? Yes. Now, in the earth, there's a voice and there's a counter voice. <laughs> this is all natural. Ain't got nothing to do with Bible or Quran. But what happens is what God has so wonderfully done through the prophets, he took the drama that is played out on the inside of your bodies and he gives them names and character. And he gives it a drama and plays it out in the stories of the Bible. But you can't read the story and say, oh, I'm reading Cain and Abel. Oh, there's some cat named Cain, did in his brother named Abel. <laughs> but you are not able to look inside and see how that drama is played out. I'd like to show you an example of Cain and Abel mm. inside the cell. Yeah. <laughs> Man, you know, I, I just got to say this. You know, brothers and sisters, look, I am so full in terms of what I really want to say to you. And it's just so painful to know that you can't say it and don't know when you get an opportunity. Mm. You know, that's the tragedy about death and leaving before you've emptied out on folk what God is showing you, you know? Well, that's another text. I, I just had to stop a moment and just think because what all is rushing in my mind, I'll never be able to bring it all out. But I hope I can get enough of it out in the next few minutes that you will understand what I'm saying and then go home and look at you because the success and failure that has dogged you is all in your hands. You are the one that can make success and you can make fair. There is no power that can overcome you if you will to be in harmony with God's will. Because God's will is not that you be a slave. Right. Not that you be a tool of anybody. You're that because of circumstances. All right? Now let's look at the voice and the counter voice. All right, family. We're going to take a pause here. We're going to finish this up tomorrow. I definitely appreciate you all's patience. Uh, let me make sure y'all can hear me. I don't think y'all can hear me. There you go. So I appreciate you all's patience. I appreciate everyone uh, taking the time. Uh, let me make sure I'm unmute on the other side as well. Uh, let me unshare on that side. Let's turn this back on. There we go. I appreciate you all working through all of the kinks, all of the technical difficulties, but inshallah, we'll get it right for tomorrow. <clears throat> we'll be able to get this uh, flowing the way we naturally do. So if you have any takeaways, press the number one. Um, if you're still here on the premium side, press the number one. If you would like to share your comments on what you've heard thus far, um, as, as always, we want to hear your feedback. You know, we all have something that we can take away from this. We all are, are working to master our urges, uh, whether they're food, whether it's sex, whether whatever it is that we may be battling with. We battle with, with it every day, especially in this wicked world that we live in, which is bombarding us with the temptations and luring us to follow those hungers, follow those, follow those urges. So, again, press the number one if you're on the premium side, if you would like to share. 
Um, and again, we'll pick this up and finish this lecture tomorrow with part two. And inshallah, we'll have everything working smoothly. I'm going to continue to test some things after we get off the call uh, to make sure that we're good. Uh, one of the things, while I wait on the ones to come in, and as you all come back over to the premium side, those who have upgraded, again, if you want to upgrade, go to www.thepowercall.net. Um, be sure to upgrade. Um, if you're on an Apple device, you will need to use your web browser for now to be able to access the plans. You'll see the plans on the app, but you won't be able to purchase within the app unless you're on an Android device. If you're on an Apple device, you'll have to go to your web browser, whether it's Chrome or uh, Google Chrome or Safari, type in www.thepowercall.net. And if you would like to uh, join or visit your local mosque, Muhammad Mosque or study group, go to www nystudygroup.com you'll see it on the uh, ticker below if you uh, missed it be sure to go and visit your local mosque tomorrow is friday we have self-improvement study group tomorrow um, and as always you're welcome on sunday as well at your local muhammad mosque study group to be able to get more of these teachings the goal of rising into the thinking of god and rising above your emotions is to continue to expose yourself to these teachings so that we can begin if not begin continue down our journey of self mastery uh, one of the things that that stuck out to me was that the urges that we have are not what are evil it's not evil to have that desire or those urges the uh, the real problem is is the way if we're going to be overcome by that if we follow the urges so um definitely want to pay attention to that and learn to control and discipline ourselves. And he spoke on the importance of fasting and why, uh, you know, within the nation we have though that national fast we do once a month. That is the beginning of that process. But we don't want to just wait until we have the national fast. At any time you can fast and be able to discipline yourself, work and strive to discipline those urges as well. Um, so definitely think about that. Um, but yes, if there's anyone that would like to share their takeaway, be sure to press the number one. And share your takeaways and we'll bring you on up. Um, otherwise, we will continue this lecture on tomorrow. Um, we'll finish it up as he begins to break down how we can see Cain and Abel within ourselves as well. So let me um, make sure I can see everybody here. Thank you, Sister Beatrice. Okay, yes. So definitely um, think about that. And, um, and also... Uh, what I, one other thing I got as well was uh, when he brought out how no one can be righteous unless they have control over those urges. And he said that we all have the potential to be gods and we have the potential to be animals or savages. So in the difference between the two is if we're going to control our urges and hungers or if our urges and hungers are controlling us. That takes us to either of those so-called extremes of the spectrum, whether we are going to rise and become a god in which we are designed to be. Or if we're going to allow our hungers and our desires to push us to becoming a beast or a savage or an animal um, as well. So definitely things to think about. Again, if you have takeaways and you don't want to come on camera, you don't want to come off on the mic, please feel free to use the Power Call testimonial space and share your takeaways thus far. Um, and be sure to keep it focused on your testimonials in that Power Call space. As well, another thing that we want to make sure we remember today, the 21st, we have um, a class for the sisters. If you haven't upgraded to the premium size sisters, the sisters only chat, we have a class going on today, saving our women from domestic abuse, abuse and sex trafficking today at 5 p.m. Central Standard Time, 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, hosted by Sister Yasina Muhammad. Be sure to check that out. Sisters only sisters only brothers we are working and developing the brothers only side as well so stay tuned for that as well um, but today is for the sisters um, tap in at 5 p.m central standard time i believe that's going to be via zoom but you'll be able to access that through the app um, as well and again you can only access these uh, uh sisters only chats or brother only chats um via the upgrade uh sister you seen i see you have um, your hand up, so let me get you up here. Bear with me. Okay. Let's see here. There we are. 
invite. All right, invite coming to you now. Let me share my screen. And on the Vimeo side, I believe y'all should be able to hear me now. I probably think I had it unmuted, but um, let's see here. Let's remove the invite. Let's try one more time. Okay, so I'm not sure what is going on. <laughs> yeah, maybe we, we just going to resume tomorrow. We're we going to get this straightened out. I apologize for the technical difficulties. But um, indeed, 
just continue to take your power call notes. This is the importance of taking notes. This is the importance of always being ready because um, use that power call testimonial side. Um, we're going to resume tomorrow. Uh, definitely use the power call testimonials to be able to share your takeaways. And Sister Yasina, uh, hold your takeaway for tomorrow if you have. Uh, if you can, we'll do that tomorrow. But again, uh, be sure to check out the sisters if you've upgraded. Check out the um, Saving Our Women from Domestic Abuse, Abuse and Sex Trafficking class today at 5 p.m. Central Standard Time, 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. That is hosted by Sister Yasina Muhammad. Uh, be sure to check it out. If you would like to upgrade, go to powercall.net, upgrade. If you're on an Apple device, if you're, you're watching this on an Android device, you can just go to general. You'll see the plans pop up and you'll be able to uh, upgrade directly in the app. But again, if you're using an iPhone or an Apple device, be sure to use your web browser, Safari or Google Chrome. Go to www.powercall.net. If you would like to visit your local monster study group, be sure uh, to go to www.noystudygroup.com. The sister will reach out to you with the information to a local monster study group close to you. Um, and be sure to... Uh, sign up, uh, complete the sign in sheet, take a picture of it, screenshot of it, send it back to the sister so that we can see that you've made it out. Tomorrow is Friday night study group. Um, and be sure to even if you don't make it Friday, come out Sunday and be able to hear these teachings as well. Um, let's see here. She says that at 3 p.m. Pacific time, I believe. So, yes, ma'am. Yep, four hours behind me. So, yes, ma'am. So, um, definitely check it out. You'll see it in the um, in the power in the premium call community. You'll be able to see um, in the events tab. You'll be able to see the class as well. Um, just check out the poll. Check out the feed. You'll see the class there. You'll see more information on it. Um, and again, I appreciate you all. Inshallah, we'll have a smoother call tomorrow. But again, be sure to enjoy um, the replay once that's available as well. Take your notes. And be sure to use the power call testimonial section as well. And then always keep Brother Ben and his wife and the family in your prayers. Keep your brothers and sisters in your, in, their, in your prayers as well because we all are going through different things in life. You know, life doesn't stop life. In. Um, so be sure to keep everyone in your prayers as we all continue to move forward. And definitely continue to work on yourself. This is about self-improvement. It's not just about them. you seeing flaws in everybody else and being able to say what well, this person is not doing or what that person is not doing. It's about what are you doing and you refining your example, refining your explanation and continue to expose yourself to these teachings because that's how we begin to handle other people better because we learn how to handle ourselves. The knowledge of self, the knowledge of God, the knowledge of the devil and understand just like the minister brought out today that the devil is not a spook just the way that God is not a spook. So we want to make sure that we're understanding that true devil that's within us that we need to master and we need to defeat before we look out and try to point the finger at the enemy outside as well. So be conscious of that. Inshallah, I will see you tomorrow um, and we'll be continuing this lecture on mastering the urges, Satan and mastering the urges, the sexual urges as well. And um, as always, assalamu alaikum.